Major League Baseball ESPN, stop with putting it spring training. It's summer. Welcome to Baseball News Club. My name is Chris. We're going to go over some hot plug items here on July 19th, Sunday. Yasiel Puig, COVID-19, tested positive. Atlanta wasn't able to sign because he's going through the physical part. So now he's back to free agency and we'll have to wait a couple weeks to see what happens with his COVID. What's interesting with him is if you're going to measure his offers, you know, if you're his agent and you're measuring like, hey, let's see what offers come in and see what your value is. He first started with the Baltimore Orioles, which is way down there. So you figure nobody wants him in baseball. And then he jumps up to Atlanta. So sounds like he still has value. We'll just have to wait it out and see. Um, stadium sounds. Teams are pumping in stadium sounds. It's awesome to watch. Uh, when they get two strikes, they pump up the cheers. So it's starting to come to life soon. Teams with longer travel schedules, are they going to be impacted by this season? There's a handful of teams that are just going to have arduous travel and schedules versus some that don't. You know, a lot of West Coast teams aren't going to be moving around a lot, so it makes you wonder. I want to talk to you guys about baseball cards. When I was growing up, these were popular in the 80s. These were these reflecting cards. And then these are awesome. I don't think they do them anymore. But way back in the day when you got your Slurpee, you can get one of these. This one has Wade Boggs, George Brent, Pete Rose on it. It'd be at the bottom of your big gulp cup or whatever. 7-Eleven's gone downhill. But these are cool because you just wiggle them. Uh, what reliever holds the most records for saves in the season? It's got Raleigh Fingers, Bruce Seeder. Bruce Suter. Right there. Uh, Dan Quisberry and Sparky Lyle. It was Bruce Suter, but this is back in... 80 so that record was shattered a long time ago by Rodriguez on the Angels all right we had three games yesterday we had the Yankees at the Mets Philadelphia at Washington then the end game was Cleveland at Pittsburgh one of the things that came along is that I wanted to discuss was uh we have no idea how this season is going to pan out it's a 60 game schedule uh we have an idea but we don't and all the best analysts ESPN Major League Baseball I really think we're going to be surprised at some of the teams that pop in there this year I've been talking about that for weeks I don't think it is what we think it's going to be. And, you know, nobody knows, not even your bookie, you know, your relative that you've been giving money to. Yesterday we had our first head-to-head -head matchups. If these are any clue of what's going to happen, you got to wonder, again, bullpen's going to be the main thing. Are bullpen's going to save or are you going to lose with bullpen's? Yesterday was kind of a little sneak preview. Again, there's no more time. This is it. We didn't have spring training build up into the regular season. We had time off, a little bit of summer camp, not spring training. And then we have head-to-heads for probably four or five days. So these players got to be ready now. Again, it doesn't matter how good you are, if you're the Yankees or the Orioles, who is ready now? So it's like the player go-home attitude. Um, there's no more time, bottom of ninth, full count, bases juiced. This is what you're looking at. And this is kind of like the, the attitude you have to have on the field is this is, the, this is game seven. We have to win today from game one to game 60. Uh, I think a lot of what's going to happen is yesterday reflected was bullpens, uh, hitting approach in seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, how teams are going to approach that. And yesterday what I saw is I saw Philadelphia jump on Max. Um, Diddy and Harper just jumped ahead on the World Series champs. Now, I know it's a summer camp game, but think about it. Uh, Max Scherzer is only going to have six to eight starts. So he gave up, what, six or seven earned runs? You know how many more starts he's going to have to have to get that ear way, way down. So I don't think ear rays are going to matter this year. I think quality starts are going to come in and be really important. And then a strong bullpen. That's pretty much it. A lot of teams are talking about using two starters. So maybe one starter goes two or three innings, another starter goes two or three innings, and then give it to the bullpen. I think we're going to see a little different baseball, and I've been seeing it around. I've been seeing a lot of small ball by teams. Sacrifice bunts, getting runs home, um, moving the runners long. I've been seeing a lot of small ball. I think we're going to see that. Uh, Yankees and Mets. This was actually a really good game all the way through and through. It was, you know, a typical great baseball game. And then the ninth inning came along. Yankees were up 4-2 and just blew up the Mets bullpen. Again, I keep talking about bullpens. Bullpens. This is a perfect example. Mets had a great, they did great until the ninth inning and then their bullpen fell apart. You only have 60 games. I'm telling you guys, these games are going to matter. And then when you look at Cleveland at Pittsburgh, same thing. It was a great game. Pittsburgh had to lead 3-0 most of the game. Uh, one crazy hit off the wall, scored three runs. And then again, bullpen, late innings. Couldn't hold on a lead. Their offense couldn't do it, so that means Cleveland's bullpen stepped up. 
again it's coming out of the bullpen so it's very interesting so anyhow i just want to give you guys a quick update today's sunday i think we got four head-to-head -head games make sure you catch them have a great day and thanks for supporting us